Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. We're coming up to the end of the garden season and it's time to start thinking about how we're going to protect our soil over winter so when we come into planting next year the garden's going to be in tip-top shape. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the benefits of using cover crops and how best to get the best results from them. So when we're thinking about planting cover crops in the soil we want to think about what we want to achieve by planting those cover crops. Do we want to relieve compaction, for example? Do we want to fix nitrogen? Do we want to build biomass? Or do we want to lock up those nutrients so they don't disappear from the soil? Now, all of those things are things that we need to bear in mind before we start planting or before we start choosing our cover crops and thinking about what properties those cover crops have. So in this bed, I had my potatoes planted in wood chips and I've harvested my potatoes now and we've got a really good crop of potatoes actually. So you can go and check out that video. Now what I've done is I've sown mustard over the top of where I had my potatoes growing. The reason that I've chosen mustard in particular is because it's a biofumigant. One of the things that mustard does is it reduces the number of root nematodes and it reduces the number of wireworms and harmful pests. So mustard is an absolutely brilliant one to sow before you plant potatoes and after you plant potatoes. So if you're thinking about a bed where you're going to plant potatoes next year, plant some mustard now, sow some mustard. Mustard can be sown well into the end of October, into the start of November and it'll get established really well. So there are, there are a few bare patches where my mustard quite hasn't got established. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice the odd couple of plants that have grown in the middle and I'm just going to sow, throw down a few more extra seeds because you want to plant heavily so just loosely broadcast them and you want you want to go quite heavy so don't worry about if it looks that like I'm going quite heavy on these seeds I am and it's deliberately because I want to get a good cover on the ground so those seeds are broadcasted in and I'm just going to rake them in and this kind of mustard is fantastic for uh, building biomass. It's really good. It'll establish itself and it'll grow into really healthy, strong plants. And they'll overwinter really well. Last year when all the gardens, picture, people were putting pictures up of bare soil, my garden was green and lush. And it was just mustard that was overwintering on the beds. The problem that a lot of people have is once they've left the garden dormant for a few months, they come back in spring and they find weeds have propped up everywhere. One of the advantages of having a good layer of cover crops down is those plants that have, we've deliberately grown to lock up nutrients now are going to act as a weed suppressant. And when we chop those down and just mulch with them, they're going to stop anything else from coming up. So that's another advantage of growing cover crops. When you're deciding on what to plant, think about what you've already had growing. So here I've got cabbages planted and I've had kohlrabi as well. And just behind me, I've got a load of sweet corn. Now, I'm not quite ready to harvest my cabbages. I'm picking one as I need it, but I've got empty space. What I've done recently is I've come around and I've picked off these loose leaves at the bottom. So these loose leaves at the bottom, I've just picked them off and I've fed them to the chickens. But now what it's doing is it's leaving me lots of loose space. So rather than just leaving this loose space free, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and plant some more cover crops here. The choice of cover crop that I'm going for around my cabbages is I'm going for winter rye and I've saved these myself and I've done a video on my Patreon account on how we go about saving seeds and if you're into saving seeds it's a really good way of ensuring a little bit more of independence and if you want to have a look at that that's one worth definitely worth checking out. So now I've got my seeds here and I've got a little bit of husk. Because I'm planting straight away, it doesn't matter about the husks. Now in that drill that I've made, I'm just going to sow some, some of these winter rye. Now these winter rye, these are a cereal crop. So these are a grain. Because I've had cabbages growing here, I don't want to plant mustard uh, because it's from the same family. But winter rye is perfect for here. These will get growing pretty soon and very soon I'll have in between my cabbages little bits of winter rye coming up and once they get established they go into huge plants and they'll produce lots and lots of biomass and they'll overwinter really well they're quite frost hardy so they're good for our winters just here where i've got all my sweet corn so i've had lots of coriander growing underneath it and there's a few weeds popping up as well so we've had double crops from here we've had sweet corn and we've had coriander underneath 
coriander is not a very big feeder so you don't need to really consider that in any any sort of way of how to feed it or anything like that but sweet corn is a really big feeder it takes out a lot of nitrogen from the soil so what I want to do here is I want to think about putting nitrogen back into that soil. Field beans, broad beans, anything like that are absolutely fantastic to get some nitrogen back into the soil. Cow peas, anything like that. If you want to sow them under there, then that's fantastic to get nitrogen back in. What I've got here is a winter mix of red clovers and white clovers. They're not as frost tolerant and they need a little bit more warmth to get them going. So early autumn is a really good time while there's still warmth in the soil so what i'm doing here is i'm just going to take out a few of the weeds there's a few coriander plants left that i'm leaving to go for seed and the weeds that i'm going to take i'm going to take out any weeds that i can find but i'm just going to rough this soil up a little bit and i'm going to under sow it with clo my clover mix and again go really heavy with these things don't be tight with the seeds because you want a good healthy cover established so I'm going to carry on sowing all under my sweet corn with this winter mix of clovers and um, yeah with this winter mix of clovers and that'll feed some nitrogen back into the soil close to the paths where um, I can get access to them really easy I'm going to put in a couple of rows of broad beans and that'll just fix my nitrogen back to the soil and it'll establish really well for me so again here I've got my first broad bean plant coming up and there's another one over there I've got actually a row of broad bean plants just under here um, and here's where I had loads of kohlrabi and I had loads of beetroot growing this year because kohlrabi is a brassica and it's quite a heavy feeder I'm going for a mix of uh, nitrogen fixers and I'll stick some winter rye in here as well that'll just give me loads of organic matter now here's one that I'll show you this is buckwheat it's not really suitable for winter especially when it frosts it's not frost hardy but this is a brilliant one for spring it's absolutely fantastic to get planted before you plant fruiting plants because this brings up a lot of phosphorus from deep underneath the soil and it makes it plant available if you're thinking about mulching with compost now then early spring you get some buckwheat into the ground then before you plant your tomatoes and stuff like that chop that buckwheat down a few months before let the phosphorus and the potassium all build up around the soil and it'll be really good for them so my runner beans are pretty much done I'm just leaving a few pods to dry because we've run out of freezer space so we'll just dry some broad bean seeds and we'll use the seeds for food so they're about um, probably a few weeks away from before I start pulling those remember broad beans again are a nitrogen fixer they're a legume so what I'm going to do under this is I'm going to under sow this I'm not going to use cover crops as such I'm going to stick overwintering onions and garlic in here and then they'll get established and as they get established the runner bean plants can just be taken out I'll have a bed that's been enriched by the runner beans and then that'll feed my next crop of plants so that's how to get two crops of plants from the same soil without the addition of fertilizers absolutely brilliant now here's a plant that I'm saving seeds from and this is vetch or tears as some people call it some of them have actually gone over and the seeds have started to pop but there's the so I need to get harvest so I need to get harvesting those seeds pretty sharpish but there's the seeds and I'm going to plant these around the garden so again with tears they're another nitrogen fixer so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to enrich my pots and buckets so you don't just have to use cover crops in the ground my gourd plants are starting to die back and they're pretty much coming to an end so once I get this last crop of uh, gourds that are growing these are all going to be coming down they're starting to die back but I'm just going to take my tears or my, or my vet, hairy vetch and I'm just going to sprinkle these into the pots because I don't want to disturb the roots of these plants quite yet I'm just going to give that a sprinkle with compost and I'll have vetch growing out of here and it'll be fixing nitrogen to these pots and then next year when I want to use this compost again for something else I've got some really rich compost ready to be used so you don't just have to limit yourself to use of cover crops in the ground or in the soil now if you've got compact soil this is a really good little trick that you can use now here these are daikon radishes so these are really long radishes and when you think about radishes think about the shape of a radish and especially the daikon radishes they're really long roots they penetrate deep down into the soil so if you've got heavy clay or if you've got 
soil that's really compact. Planting these plants will dig down into that soil and then when you come to the, towards the end of winter, early spring, just cut them off at ground level. So cut the top of the radish off so there's no leaves left and leave the rest of that radish in the ground. That'll break down, the worms will come in and eat it, it'll break down and you've just created a compost corridor and then that'll just feed the soil and it'll loosen that soil up. It's a really clever trick to break up clay soil with the use of plants and plant roots. So this bed, I've got loads of kohlrabi growing and they're really going well still. But again, we're not ready to pull this bed of plants. So what I'm gonna do with this bed is I'm gonna put a light sowing of clover in and I'm also gonna plant my garlic in between that. The clover will be fixing nitrogen. The garlic will be coming up and establishing itself. And because clover is a very low growing plant, I don't need to worry about it out competing the garlic because the garlic will just grow way past it and it'll establish itself to about a foot tall by the time deep winter come, sets in. The clover will die back and it'll come back early next spring again. But by that time, my garlic will be f three foot tall and, uh, and establishes itself really well. And that's how you get a symbiosis between your cover crop and your cash crop. So that's a really quick summary of the way to use cover crops to improve soil structure and build soil life. If you don't get enough time to get your cover crops in, get a deep layer of mulch down. It's the next best thing. And I'll do a video on mulching and deep mulching during winter and preparing for next year on that separately. But ground cover is absolutely key. Don't leave your bed bare. Don't leave your bed covered with just compost because you don't want to lose all the nutrients that you're putting in. You want them to be locked and ready for next year. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe for regular updates. Make sure you ring the bell so you get the notifications for when I put a video out. I also make videos on Patreon, so if you want to support this channel, that's a really good way of doing it. I'll leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.